All right, we left off at number 11. Let's see, this is a pretty straightforward triangle, so I can draw it in my messy style without the line tool. So, uh, uh, let's see, we have A, B, C. This is 3, 4, and 6. Each angle of triangle ABC has the same measure as an angle in triangle XYZ, which has not been shown. Well, we should draw that, though. It has the same angle. I have a feeling, well, that this is a similar triangle. So X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. If the length of one side of x, y, z is 24, so we just know some random side here is 24. It could be this one. Maybe. I don't know. The length of one side of the angle is 24. What is the possible perimeter of x, y, z? What is one possible perimeter? So here, this, is probably, this probably has three correct answers, um, which is fun, because it, in some ways, increases your probability of getting this right. But when you know that two triangles have all the same angles, you immediately know that it is a similar triangle, which means that they look the same, they're just of a different scale. And if you and you should watch the similar triangle video that I made in the geometry playlist if this makes no sense to you, um, because this will make no sense if you haven't heard the term before. But since these are similar triangles, the the ratios of the of the corresponding the sides are going to be the same. And we can, you know, they're they're letting us pick which side is has length twenty four. So let's say that the side that corresponds to side 3 is of length 24, right? We don't know that this is definitely the case, but they're letting us pick. So I'm going to say that you know this side, that xy corresponds to ab. So if this side is 24, then this side is going to be 4 thirds of this side, right? We can, it, it, hopefully you remember similar triangles, that the ratios of the sides are the same. So if 3 is to 4, as 24 is to? Well, to go from 3 to 24, we multiply by 8. So to go from 4 to this, we multiply by 8. So 32. And to go from 6 to this, we multiply by 8. 48. So this is a possible combination of sides for a, a, a similar triangle to triangle ABC. And we could just add these up. So let's see, 24 plus 32 is 56. 56. 24 plus 32 is 56 plus 48. 6 plus 8 is 14, 104. And you just bubble type that in, 104. I mean, you could have picked the, the 24 side is, you know, this could have been like this. It could have been 24, 24. If this is 24, then we're multiplying by, let me see. If this was 24, that means we're multiplying by 6 to get to 24. So this would be 18, and this would be 36. And you could add all of those up together, and you would have gotten another answer. And that would have been correct. And similarly, you could have made this side. You could have made this side 24. If this side was 24, then that means we're multiplying every side by 4. So this would have been 12, and this would have been 16. And you could have added those up, and that would have been the other, the third possible correct answer for this problem. Exciting. Let's move on. The sum of five consecutive integers is 1,000. Number 12. Five consecutive integers is 1,000. What is the value of the greatest of these integers? So they're consecutive integers. So there are five of them. So we could say x. So we want to know the greatest of these integers. So let's say x is the greatest. And so the second greatest is going to be x minus 1. The third greatest is x minus 2. The fourth greatest is x minus 3. And then the fifth greatest is x minus 3. Four, right? These are five integers, and they're consecutive. And this is the largest, right? And we're going to take the sum of them. So if I take the sum of all of these numbers, and this is a tip. If they were asking for the smallest number, I would have started with x, and I would have gone x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, like that, because then x would have been my smallest number. But they said x is the largest. We want to solve for x, so the greatest of these integers. So that's why I subtracted. So let's see. If we add, add all these up, we have 5x's, so that's 5x. Minus 1, minus 2 is minus 3. Minus 3 is minus 6. Minus 4 is minus 10. 5x minus 10. And they say that the sum is 1,000. Equals 1,000. And this is a fairly simple algebra equation. 5x is equal to add 10 to both sides, 1,010, which is also 10 in binary if you are a geek. 
going to divide both sides by 5. x is equal to 205, right? 200, um, yes. No, 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 no. My god. I can't divide by 5. 202, right? x is equal to 202. 202. There you go. Not too bad, huh? All right. Number 13. And I'm going to switch colors because this pale yellow is getting monotonous. I'll switch to something bold, like blood red. No, 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 that's tacky. Number 13. The figure above shows y equals g of x if the function h is OK. So let me, let me draw that, because I don't want to confuse you just saying a lot of random crap before. Uh, you see what the graph looks like. Although you should have it turned to the same page. OK, so then we draw it like that. I don't have to draw it that far down. Looks something like that. And then the, it looks something like this. Let me draw it in a different color. The line itself looks something. It goes from here, it goes up like this. Then it kind of comes back down like here. Then it kind of bounces. And it goes back up like this. And then they tell us that this line right here, this is y is equal to g of x. And it's going to be a functions problem, I can tell you already. So you should do the function, watch the function videos or do the function modules on Khan Academy. So the figure above shows the graph y equals g of x. If the function h is defined by h of x is equal to g of 2x plus 2, they want to know what h of 1 is equal to. Well, with functions, we, you know, there's, they're putting a 1 in into this you know, black box. So wherever we see the x, we put a 1 in, right? So h of 1, h of 1, h of 1 is equal to, let's use this, use this definition, g of 2 times x. Well, in this case, x is 1. g of 2 times 1 plus 2. So that equals g of 3 plus 2. And now we have to figure out what g of 3 is. And if you look at this graph, you know, it's in, in the book it's more obvious. It's 1, 2, and then you have a, it, it pretty much hits 0 right at 3, right? So g of 3, when x is equal to 3, g of 3 is right here. That's 0. It's 0. g of 3 is 0. 0. So this is 0. So we're just looking for the 2. h of 1 is 2. That's all. Amazing. All right, next problem. OK, Ex number 14. Exactly four actors, four actors, try out for four parts in a play. Four parts in a play. If each actor can perform any one of the part, any one part, and no one will perform more than one part, how many different assignments of actors are possible? Well, let's just say you're just randomly doing it, right? So let's, let's put up the actors. So, well, so you, you take the first guy, right? And you say, well, I can put him in any one of four roles, right? For the first guy, I could put him in any one of four roles, right? And then the second guy, um, well, I shouldn't assume they're all men, the second actor or woman or actress, um, one role has, has been taken already. Right? I mean, there were four roles. This first person took it. So now there's only three roles left, right? There's three possibilities. So there's one of three possibilities for that second person, correct? OK, so the third person, how many possibilities does, does he or she have left? Well, two of the roles have been taken already, so there's only two possibilities for that person. And then the last person to kind of be picked has only one role left, right? So the combinations are literally just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's, that's 12 times 24 combinations, uh, or assignments of roles. And I actually haven't made a probability and combinations and permutations video yet. I will. Um, and when, once I do, watch that if this, if this problem seemed confusing to you. But hopefully it makes a little bit of intuitive sense.